Hi and welcome to Healthy Life Hacks. I'm Jennifer Jeffries, the present day wise woman, a realistic naturopath coming to you from the surfing beaches of Australia. This podcast is for those who are wanting to really rock their lives and health and live from a place of prevention. Let's get into today's episode. I've got gas! Not the farty kind of gas, but I've got gas. Well, I don't have it at the moment. I absolutely had it in the past, back in my 20s. So what's gas, apart from the farty kind of gas? Not talking about that right now. Gas, which is general adaptation syndrome, is a term that was coined by a guy by the name of Dr. Hansel. And he was the first one to kind of research back in the 20s, guys, back in the 1920s. He worked out that there were two kinds of stresses. One, pleasant stress, which... Yeah, and stress is good for us. The pleasant stress is good for us, all right? So he, he went, he really was able to see the difference and the effects on the physical body between that happy, pleasant stress and the unpleasant stress, as he called it. So the happy, pleasant stress is the, you know, that kind of nervous excitement, cool kind of stress in life. And then the unpleasant stress is the stuff that really taxes our body and taxes our adrenal glands. Now, in Chinese medicine, I've talked about it before. In Chinese medicine, we say that you're born with a certain amount of qi, life force, and it lives in your adrenal glands. We're meant to you know, spend a bit of adrenal energy every day. We're meant to put a bit back in and spend it and put it back in. But if we spend more than we're putting back in, our body gets tired. And he identified there were three, three stages to gas. The first stage is the alarm reaction. So this is where the body goes, oh shit, okay, stress, got to deal with this, going to chuck out a bit more adrenaline and heart will raise, sweaty palms and the ability to either stand and fight or get out of there. That's stage one. Stage two is a resistance stage. Now this is if the stress continues and it can go from days to weeks, but this is where it's that chronic day in, day out, stress, worry, overwork, life stuff. And your adrenal glands are amazing because they actually physically get bigger to start with. They, they actually grow in size to help you produce you know, more adrenaline, more cortisol, more stress hormone, more, more cortisol, more adrenaline, more stress hormones to help your body to be able to deal with it. Okay. The challenge is your body hasn't had that chance to recover. And when that happens, we start heading to the exhaustion stage. And this is where your body goes, oh, shit, Jen, what have you done? And in fact, my body did that to me in my mid-20s. I went, what are you doing? Like, I, I've got nothing else to give you. I've grown my adrenal. I've made my adrenals bigger. I've given you all these extra hormones and you still want to still stay in that stress? I have nothing left to give you. And now that, that stress bank account, that adrenal bank account is in debt. And things start compounding and the body just goes, I can't do it, Jen. And for me, it showed up as just like, I had had nothing. I had no life in me. I just didn't. So like I said, stress is good for us. Pleasant stress. That's what it's meant to be. It's one of those things that keeps us alive. It's really good. But we're meant to you know, think of the old days, you go and hunt down a dinosaur, it's like stress, 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 and then it takes a long time to eat a dinosaur. We're not meant to stay amped up. And this is the thing nowadays, we see people staying in fight and flight for ridiculous amounts of time. Instead of moments or days, they're staying it in days, weeks, months, and years. I was too. And I was propping up my body. I was working in the pharmacy industry. I had access to all the legal drugs. Uh, as an alcohol and all those kind of things, I was propping up my body to have my body to be able to keep up with me. And one day it just went, Jen, can't do it. And, uh, you know, I still remember that time and the doctors went, Jen, like, and I actually ended up with Hashimoto's out of it, which is an autoimmune disease of the thyroid, because your adrenals in Chinese medicine, we say they tell your thyroid what to do and tell your reproductive system what to do. And my body was just screwed on so many levels because I wasn't getting that, you know, amp up stress and then recovery time, amp up and recovery. And it's interesting. It takes about 20 to 60 minutes after every little <gasps> stress, <clears throat> every one of those. Now <clears throat> the kids are going, mum, 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 the, the traffic, the, 
too many emails, just the, the life stuff down. It's not even big life and death stuff. And yet it takes us towards our death in a really shitty way. So our body's designed that after that, ah, stress, that fight and flight kind of stress, it can come back to like the hormones and that can settle between oh, 20 to 60 minutes after being, you know, amped right up. If the body goes, okay, yeah, yeah, cool. The stress is gone. But if you're in that just sitting on the edge all the time kind of mode, like shit, your body just goes, I can't. And so it's just pumping out cortisol and, and adrenaline all the time. And this is where we dig into so many of the other problems I've talked about in so many of the other podcasts. That's why I want to talk about today. Gas is real, guys. It is real. So what is the, the common ways that most people deal with it? The bottom line is they try to suppress it. They suppress the 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 um, the conscious thought of what's happening and think, no, I'm good. I'll, I'll, I'll just go on. I, I can do this. I can just power through it. We well, can't. So for me, it was alcohol. I ended up an alcoholic. I really did. Uh, and, and I had to get my shit together to bloody live. But I was, it was a shocker. It really was for me. That was my thing of choice that I went to. That people use smoking. Like smoking is an incredible suppressant. It, it, it is. It does. It's just like, oh, geez, stressed. I'll just, I'll have a smoke. And if you go, no, no, I just socially smoke. Well, bullshit. I'd call you on that because you're not. You're, you're still suppressing while you're doing that. So smoking, drinking too much, overeating and undereating, undereating. I meet so many skinny stress heads. I've talked about skinny stress heads on my podcast. Just binging, you know, doing a Netflix binge. Netflix binges are great ways to just zone out from the world, but you're not coping with life. You're suppressing things, okay? Uh, I, I'm the lone wolf. I, it's easier for me to be the recluse and not play with other people than to go and play with other people. But withdrawing, if you are normally that gregarious kind of person and you find yourself, you know, not playing with family and friends and, and not going out and being social, that's a normal, that's normal response as well. Drugs of all description, prescription or not prescription, both. Uh, sleeping, just going, oh, shit, I just need a nap or I'm going to sleep in. I just sleeping to switch out the world. That's huge. Procrastinating. Like you, we will do anything. We will just do anything and fill up our life full of stuff to keep going. Because when we stop, when we stop, our body tries to do the drop. It tries to recover. But you're so in that groove of just going, your body just goes, ah. And, and it comes out as things like that tired and cranky, you know, uh, kind of person. It's not good. There's no longevity in it and it is taking you towards an early grave. So how do we really deal with stressful situations? We can't make stress go away. And like I said, the pleasant stress that he talked about is really good for us, but it's the unpleasant stress that's not cool. We've got two choices. We either change the situation or we change our reaction to it, okay? The first one is we avoid the stressor. That's it. If there's someone that you have conflict with, well, if you're not going to emotionally talk it out and clean it up, don't go there. If you're the kind of person who's, you know, giving yourself a hard time because you're overeating or something, um, don't put the shit food in the house. Pretty things. That's it. Like we, you want to avoid the stressor or alter the stressor. Okay. You've got to change the situation, either avoid it or alter the stressor. And most times, even if you just drop it back 10%, maybe that's a way that you can get your head around and deal with it differently. And that's why I'm talking about the altering the stressor. If it's, you know, uh, whether it's a timeline to get something done or whether it's, you know, dealing with the kids getting ready for school and it's just like, Ugh! alter the routine so that you can deal with it differently. And then the other way is to change our reaction. We can adapt to the stressor. And I'm big on getting people to adapt or we accept it. We just go, it's just the way it is. And I'm going to do these strategies to manage myself amongst the stressor. That's it. So we either change the situation or change our reaction to it. So I thought I'd have a chat on some of the ways that I've found over the years that help me, but also my patients in my work to be able to reverse that gas thing, reverse that adrenal burnout. So here we go. A few of them, you're going to go, oh, Jen, it can't be that simple. Guys, it's that simple. It's just this simple. So here we go. Go for a walk. Move your ass. I'm serious. And when you're in that 
that gas, you know, alarm kind of stage, don't go and pump it out of gym. Don't go for a run. You want to go for a walk. Just walk. Move your body and just at a just an easy pace. Let your body come down. Okay. So if you've been, you know, in a high stressy kind of situation for a while or just a you know an episode or whether it's been chronic, either way, these are some of the things you can do. Just just go for a walk. Start there. Pretty simple. Spend time in nature. Spend time, you know, gardening is my thing. When life is going on, I, you know, I work from home. I'll go out and do a lap in my garden, have a chat to my plants. And it just brings me back into balance sooner because I still get stress. I just don't let it tax me. That's the difference. Okay. So spending time with nature. Uh, phone a friend, like phone a good friend who, and I'm not talking about venting and into it, but just just catch up and have a chat. The next one's to write in a journal, like brain dumping. And I've talked about Zen funerals. You want to just, just get it out of your head. I've also talked about the fact that I love to end my days with a long bath, a bath with some oils or scented candles, you know, soft light, whatever it is for you, allows your adrenals to come down. I've also got my pussycat, Harley. She is the best remedy if I've had a day or a moment. It's just like she gives the bo- the best unconditional cuddles. Whatever your kind of pet is, is really good. I'm also a big fan of getting regular massage and regular kinesiology and regular acupuncture. I bring all of those kind of treatments into my day-to-day life to help me stay in check. And just, I've been there, guys. I'm not going back. So I live from a place of prevention. Music works. Whatever is your kind of music that lights up your soul. Watching comedies. I talk, you know, I've talked before about the fact that whenever I eat a meal, I watch a comedy. Well, I also watch surfing movies too. Um, but I, I, I'm like, they're those things that just light me up. Don't do anything serious. You want to, you know, just let your body, let your spirit just be. Oh, it has to get a breather at some stage. Nutritionally, there's a few foods that you can play with. B group vitamins are the first place to go. They help your body to adapt to stress. So this is your brown bread, your brown rice, your your brown pastas, uh, barley, millet, those kind of grains. Eggs and dairy products are cool. Meat, if you are a meat eater, go for something lighter. Fish, of course, we'll skip the meat. Legumes, go the legumes, beans and lentils. Just think foods close to nature, nuts and seeds and sunflower seeds and almonds are at the top of the list. Dark green leafy vegetables, awesome broccoli, spinach, kale, all those kind of ones. And fruits, you know, just your, your fruit and veggie close to nature, guys. That's the place to start. Let Make it easy for your body to pull up nutrition. Now, vitamin C rich foods are also very useful. So this is your citrus, citrus nowadays, you know, our, our oranges and that have bugger all vitamin C in them, but limes and lemons. Um, I love kiwi fruit. They've got a great dose of vitamin C. Fijoas, which is a, a kiwi, a New Zealand fruit that's only really available in May. They're a bit harder to find. Red capsicums, loaded. Red capsicums are all easy. If you're one of my North American kind of mates, do you guys call them peppers? We call them capsicums, but the red ones, loaded. Strawberries, black currants, broccoli, again, dark green leafy vegetables. Get into them. And then the other area of nutrition is your magnesium rich foods. So dark chocolate. Yes, you have permission to eat good quality dark chocolate in balance. Don't you know, nail down a whole block, but dark chocolate is useful. I'm a big fan of black strap molasses. Organic black strap, strap, organic black strap molasses is cool. Um, avocados are great. Again, nuts and seeds and legumes. Tofu, useful from soybeans, but non-GMO. Make sure you get the non-GMO one. And again, your brown bread, brown rice, brown pasta, the whole grains are also rich in magnesium. They're just a few of the foods, guys. And so if you're eating your nutrition, you, you know, your daily eating, 80% of the time is close to nature. Well, that you're on the right path, okay? But what you might want to do, especially if you've had some stress going on, you might want to jump into some adaptogen herbs. So I've talked in the past about adaptogens in that adaptogens are a class of herbs that naturopaths prescribe that help our body to adapt to stress. We can't make the stress go away, but we can help our body adapt to it. And there are dozens and dozens of these herbs. And I'll just, I'll chuck in a couple of links into the show notes to make it easy for you to go and track them down. But we can't make stress go away. And when I burned out back in my twenties, a naturopath 
got me back on track and I have taken adaptogen herbs most days for, well, shit, 35 years. Yes, I'm that old. That's insane. 34 years. I've taken those herbs for so long because I'm all about living from a place of prevention. I just think they are essential to our well being. So, anyway, check out them as well. Today, I am leaving you with three healthy life hacks. The very first one is to hold hope. You know, it's so important if you are down that rabbit hole at the moment and if we're at the end of 2020, it's been a little bit of a year for stress. It really has had moments where it purely sucked for me and I think for many of you. So the difference is, we, we, there it is, we, we've got to just get on with it, but get on with it in ways that we're going to let our body to recharge, not just suppress the feelings and that, okay? So hold hope. I burned out. I went to full stage three back in my 20s. I, am, I will be 60 in six months and I am boringly strong, fit and healthy I know if I can do give my body the reboot and then live from a place of prevention, you can too. And it's not being about perfect. You know, if you, if you do these kind of things 80, 90% of the time, you are way ahead of the game, I promise. Uh, healthy life hack number two is to make adaptogen herbs part of your daily routine. I can't encourage that enough. They have been a game changer to my health and well-being, and particularly... Also, as a woman, I haven't talked on, a, on the, about menopause and things yet on podcasts, but it's coming on the list. But your adrenal glands determines whether you have a fantastic or a shitty menopause. Please, if, if you're a woman and haven't gone through menopause yet, get on adaptogen herbs, okay? I'll put it in the show notes, a link to what I take. And healthy life hack number three is just to pick one thing, please, one thing. Don't try and do it all at once. Do one thing and do it well. Off the list to reverse the gas. Okay, go to the, you can go to the show notes, www.healthylifehacks.com.au, uh, where, where they'll be all listed, go there and just think, okay, so just for this week, I'm going to go for a relaxing walk. Just for this week, I'm going to phone a friend. Just for this week, I'm going to use some oils and candles and I'm just going to have a bath. I'm going to lock the kids out of the, bed, out of the bathroom and I'm just going to have, even if it's 15 minutes, guys, just let your body breathe. Cool. Awesome. I look forward to seeing you next episode when I'm going to be talking about how you can make butter really healthy for you. I want to thank you for being here today. If you enjoyed my podcast, please let me know by leaving a review where you're listening in from. Every month, I draw one lucky person who leaves a review to have a free one hour consultation with me. If you would like to receive a free copy of my Feed Your Body ebook, simply click the link in the comments below. And join my newsletter and we will get that free ebook sent to you. I welcome your emails and you can write to me at podcast at healthylifehacks.com.au. Until next time, remember when it comes to life, live it, love it, and get on with it.